Hey, welcome back. So let's chat nighttime snacking, nighttime binging, nighttime eating. Nighttime eating and snacking, typically, <laughs> and look, I can only say this from a place of formerly being morbidly obese, but typically nighttime snacking does not go hand in hand with weight loss. Typically, nighttime snacking goes hand in hand with being overweight. Um, yeah, and I, again, I can speak from personal experience as a former morbidly obese woman that I was a full on snackaholic. I had snacks every single night. I ate in front of the TV almost every single night. And when I made the decision that, okay, enough is enough, I need to do something about this, that was when I started to change my habits. And that was when I started to look at what are some things that non-overweight people do and what are some things that I can do. And so before we dive in, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure to hit the red subscribe button. We do upload four times a week here on the channel, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Friday. Weight loss tips, fitness tips, healthy recipes, that not only helped me lose 161 pounds in 13 months and made me sane because if I had to eat card like things that tasted like cardboard every day I would have like gone insane but yummy recipes that have my husband picky husband approved kid approved and that have helped me still feel like I'm eating really yummy food and help me maintain a size two for years and years and years and years. And so we will upload all that four times a week here on the channel. And so make sure you have subscribed and then go ahead and smash the like button. Uh, hit the little thumbs up. It helps out my channel tremendously. And I would really appreciate it if you did that. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Nighttime snacking. So I get this question a lot from a lot of the clients that I work with. Carmen, what time should I stop eating? Should I ha Can I have a snack at night? Should I have a snack at night? And all of those things. So let me first and foremost say that the there's a lot of different things that go into weight loss, but the biggest determining factor in weight loss is calories in and calories out. So the amount of calories you're f giving, you're putting in your mouth is fuel, and then the amount of calories your body's burning, the fuel it's burning. So if your body is burning 2,000 calories a day and you give it 2,500, that's 500 extra calories that now turns into fat. And so that is the biggest, there's lots of other little things, but by far the biggest determining factor with weight loss is calories, calories in and calories out. Now with that being said, your size of your bottom is determined by the habits that you have. So for instance, when I was a size 22, 288 pounds, my habits were clearly, my shirt says tacos. They were clearly, my tacos were my habit. Uh, you know, running for the border at 11 o'clock at night was my habit. I had morbidly obese habits was the truth. You, If you have skinny habits, then you're skinny. If you have fit habits, then you're fit. You do not get morbidly obese if you have skinny eating habits. Does that make sense? This never occurred to me all those years ago. I was that morbidly obese person that actually thought I didn't eat that bad. There was a season where I thought, you know, maybe I'm really fluffy because I just don't eat enough. And maybe my body's in starvation mode and maybe that's why. Yeah, I believed that all the way up until I was watching one of those commercials one time for the kids in Africa that were, you know, the, you know, the one that just like tears at your heartstrings and makes you call the 1-800 number because... <laughs> It's so sad. Those were, you can see the kids' ribs and the flies and all of that. And I remember watching one of those commercials came out one time and I was like, those kids are hungry. Yeah, they're not overweight. Their ribs are sticking out. They're malnourished. Like that's what happens when you're starving. Carmen, you're morbidly obese. You're clearly not starving. <laughs> anyway, I had a habit of nighttime snacking. I had a habit of eating at night. And so in order to go from morbidly obese to fit, happy, and healthy, I needed to change my habits. Because first we make our habits and then we make us. And then they make us. We First we make our habits and then they make us. And so I needed to make some new habits if I wanted to lose weight, be at a healthy weight, and, and, and start enjoying my body again, have more energy, be at a healthy weight to put myself in the best position to be here with my kids as long as physically possible. And so one of the things that I did 
because again, I had had a long history of nighttime snacking. It was almost like therapeutic to me to sit in front of the TV, eat, get full, and then fall asleep or lay down or go to bed. Like it was almost like a comforting thing, a comforting habit that I had. And so it was like, no, I'm not, I need to break that habit. And so I laid down a rule that from six o'clock on, six o'clock was my last time I ate. After six o'clock at night, I did not eat. I put nothing else in my body, in my mouth, except for water. Anything that had zero calories, <laughs> which was like tea, uh, you know, water. Yeah, pretty much it. Some diet soda sometimes. And yeah, that was it. And so, and so many times people will say, well, Carmen, you don't have to stop eating. You, you can still eat at night and lose weight. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not about that. If you come from where I come from and where some of you come from, where you've struggled with your weight your whole life, it's about recognizing the habits that helped you get to there and going in the opposite direction. It's about taking those bad habits, throwing them out the door and replacing them with some good habits. And a horrible habit for me was nighttime snacking. And so it was like, no, I'm just not going to eat past six o'clock at night. And that was just how it was. And I lost a hundred pounds in my first 202 days. And I created a habit of being able to sit there at night and not like, I can remember the first month. I mean, oh, I would sit there and we'd be watching TV and all I could think about was what I wanted to eat. Like all I could think about was what was in the pantry, what I wasn't having, what sounded good. Like it was impossible for me to sit in front of the TV at night and not think about what I wanted to eat. But it only took a couple months before all of a sudden I didn't think about that anymore. Where I didn't, I didn't sit down at TV and felt like I was being deprived or felt like I was missing something. And more importantly, I got rid of a bad habit and created a healthy one. Instead of just dieting, instead of doing something for a short term to lose some weight, only to go gain it all back later, I took a bad habit and replaced it with a good one. And so still, unless it's a date night or a special night with my kids, I still don't eat past six o'clock at night. It's just, and, and it's not necessarily because I'm obviously trying to lose weight. Like I'm not at all, but I don't even crave it. I'm not even hungry. Like it doesn't even occur to me anymore to eat. Gosh, it sounds so weird coming out of my mouth. Now, believe me, if we're on a date and there's like some good dessert, I have no problem eating past six o'clock at night. But as a general rule through the week, I don't. I, I have water at night and that's pretty much it. And so I really wanna encourage you if you're in a place where you're trying to lose weight to at some point, draw a line in the sand and say, if, if you're someone who has struggled with nighttime binging, nighttime eating, you do good all day long and then all of a sudden the snack monster attacks at night. If that has been a Achilles heel for you, if that has been a bad habit for you, that you would stop it dead in its tracks and you would say you would not continue to let that have power over you, that you would, that you would take power over it and start uh, just say, no, I'm not going to eat past five or six or seven or eight or whatever that is for you in your life. Um, and you would hold that. And if there happens to be a night where, you know, none of us are perfect. So let's just say you have a night where you say, nope, I'm not going to do this. Um, and you do. Let's just say you have some ice cream or you have a cookie. Then the next day, certainly get rid of it. If you have food triggers in your house that you are not able to resist, especially in the beginning of your weight loss journey, you got to get rid of them until you build up that willpower muscle until you build up that strength to be able to resist those things. You got to get rid of them. And so you can do this. You can do this. You can do hard things. And in order to get change, you have to be willing to make a change. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Make sure if you haven't hit the subscribe button, give the video a thumbs up and we will see you on the next one.